Welcome to the Postal Mate webinar, 12 Mistakes Newbies and Some Veterans Make. My name is Karen Grant and I'll be your instructor today. We're so glad to have you and we're gonna get started right off the bat with number one. And trust me, I've had veterans make some of these mistakes and I've had newbies make these mistakes. So let's talk about dimensions. Um, when you enter dimensions, you can round up automatically when you enter it in Postmate. Postmate adheres to the carrier rules, which for every carrier, with the exception of one service with one carrier, which is cubic rate, um, the rules are the same, thank goodness. And it is at 0.50, the carrier rounds up, and at 0.49, the carrier rounds down. Now, you may have been told differently, but I assure you that's what's written in the carrier rules. So if you do uh, 12 and a quarter inches, the carrier will round that down to 12. Um, in our industry, it has, has been common habit though to increase that to a 13 and that's fine. That is what I call a store decision. You have to take into account um, that 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 box may change shape, which we'll talk about in just a moment. But I want you to know that the it's very important to enter those dimensions in Postmate, but it's very important that you understand that Postmate will adhere to the rules. So if you're one of those that does exact measurements, and not, we don't have too many of those, but some of you are very picky that way, and that's fine. Postmate will follow the rules to the T. We'll come back to that in just a minute, because I want to get to um, number two here entering dimensions and this is a real i have a real issue with stores that don't enter dimensions and i'll tell you who um who are the who who i consider the bad guys in this if you will it's old store owners and i don't mean that literally like age i mean it like old habit store owners there was a time many years ago where if it was under a certain size it didn't really matter if you entered the dimensions because dimensional weight didn't apply until it got to a certain point those days are long gone so if you're a believer that it's still that way please change your mind and if you're a new store owner and maybe you took over an existing store from somebody else and maybe that old store owner taught you that you need to get rid of that whole premise it is not true so I'm just, I just put up here a little chart and I want to tell you that if you don't leave dimensions in, um, it, it, don't put any dimensions in, so just leave it at zero by zero by zero. These are the prices for a particular package going to zone eight, lightweight packages. You can see it's cheap, um, going both ground, next day, and international. Interesting, the international is cheaper. Um, anyway, <laughs> um, and then once you start entering dimensions, how much that changes. And then when you, you know, even a bigger dimension, it changes even more. And I will tell you, I have um, two things I want to talk about on this. I had a store two weeks ago who was exactly in this situation. Um, they had purchased a store from somebody else and had not been taught to enter dimensions in all cases. And they called concerned that their um, bill from the carrier came in on two packages significantly higher than what they had anticipated and what Postmate told them. On one package, it was almost $50 difference, and on the other, it was more than $25 difference. So they lost over $75 on these two packages. Well, it turns out that they were international packages. Thank goodness, good for the store that they were on the smaller side, but the store had entered no dimensions in Postmate. And the carrier had, of course, measured it because they measure every single package without fail and build them dimensional weight accordingly. So they're just really, really lucky that they didn't enter, um, that they that this was not a big package, that these were small. So it was a $75 lesson learned for them that hopefully they'll never repeat. So I can't stress enough to make sure you enter dimensions. Another um, concern about dimensions happened actually this morning and one of our support techs was handling it. And one of our customers, who again is a, a store owner that recently purchased a store from an existing store owner, and I don't know how well they were taught. Sometimes there are new store owners are taught really well, and sometimes not so much. Um, they wanted to send a quite large package, and the dimensions on it were 58 by 58 by 6. And they entered it in Postmate, and they got no rates. Um, well, if you do the math on that, the dimensional um, size on that is somewhere around, I want to say 183. I did the math earlier, but it, it's quite high. Let's say 183. And the maximum allowed is 165. And they were in, they were very insistent on our tech that, oh, well, we've shipped it before. We've shipped this package before and it's gone fine. Well, 
those dimensions, if you measured it correctly, those dimensions are too large. Now here's the killer. Not only will Postmate not give you any rates, and that's a good thing, if you lie to Postmate or if you go on their website and lie, because you're gonna have to lie to get a label on this. If you lie to get a label on this, then it, it, what happens is a, what's called an unauthorized oversized charge is applied by the carrier. And just a word of caution, it starts at $850 plus fuel surcharge. So it ends up around $900 to $1,000. And during certain times of the year, peak surcharge can apply to that. So it can easily be a $1,200 um, surcharge applied to that package. And I guarantee they weren't making that much money because it was going domestic. So be very, very careful about always entering dimensions. Um, Postmate has some settings where it can force you to enter dimensions, but it also has a setting where it allows you to bypass dimensions and not enter them if you don't want to. Um, I'm, <laughs> you know me, I'm such a rules girl, right? So I'm really trying to talk our development team in, into get rid of, getting rid of that bypass. But we have a really a, a habit of not wanting to interrupt your flow of business. So we might have five customers out there that don't want that. And so you know maybe we won't change that. I'm going to get my way eventually. So one day that option won't be there and you'll have to enter dimensions because you need to. But um, so make sure you that happens. Um, quick question came up. Does that also apply to drop offs? Yes, it does. If somebody drops off that package that's 58 by 58 by six, the carrier may take it. Now they could return it to sender on that, or they could just ship it and assess that account holder on that, the, the huge monstrous surcharge. Um, that surcharge rarely goes un, uh, um, un, unattached, <laughs> Forgot, lost my word, but it rarely um, is missed. It, it, they definitely will get hit with that. And we've had some stores that have hit, got hit with that, have kind of fudged in the system to get the package through and get a label and then been hit with that. And it's not pretty. It is not pretty at all. So um, please be careful and always, always enter dimensions. So this brings me back to kind of the first slide. And that is that boxes change shape. Things can happen to your box. And of course, so we have a package that was a 24, 16, 14, and it can change shape to a degree that, um, and, and this is the box, this is actually a perfect example of a box. Remember, it's the longest length, it's the longest width, and it's the longest height. And this got squashed mostly on one side, so it kept kind of the height. Um, so it actually ended up being a bigger dimensional box. And this, this new size weighs like, an additional four or five pounds of dimensional weight. So it's going to cost more. Make sure that your, your boxes are filled well enough that they can't squash like this. And make sure that you're entering dimensions so that um, if the size changes a little bit, you'll be okay. And that's why I say I went back to, if it's 12 and a quarter, we have a lot of stores that enter 13. So let me just share with you. When I have a box, let's say I have a box where I am, and I'm in Arizona, and it's 12 and 7 eighths. That same box in Florida is probably 13 because of the humidity. So it's super dry, paper shrinks here. When it goes um, to a humid place, it swells. So boxes can change shape. And remember, the, the, the numbers written on the bottom of the carton are absolutely wrong. Do not ever enter those dimensions. Okay, those are the interior dimensions, not the exterior dimensions. The exterior dimensions are always at least a quarter to a half an inch bigger on every direction. So please be careful with that. Next one, insuring whatever. Oh, we've had this happen. Um, I had a customer call up recently, and um, sometimes we get new customers. That, well, Postmate, let me send it. Well, yeah, Postmate can't tell you, you know, doesn't know what's in your box. Um, that is a true story. So be careful with what you're sending. Uh, cash coins, here's the big one, gift cards. Gift cards are not insurable, folks. Not insurable. Checks. I'm going to write a $75,000 check and insure it for, you know what it's insured for? It's insured for the value of the stock payment and the reissue of the check. Probably $15 to $16. That's it. Um, art, antiques, and jewelry have limited values that you can insure. Um, by the way, different packaging materials have different um, values. So, for example, an envelope, 
Um, you can't put really, I think an envelope I want to say is limited to $500. Don't quote me on that. Um, but I think it's $500 of value. So you have to know not only the, the material you're using or the cont container limits, but also the carrier limits. And each carrier is a little bit differently, although as is habit, UPS and FedEx tend to be pretty darn similar. So becoming familiar with one is probably gonna do you pretty good for the other. Also, if you happen to use alternate insurance, and many of you do, um, they have unique rules. So they may waive, they may um, allow more insurance, for example, on art, antiques, and jewelry, especially if um, you call in and get special permission and stuff. I don't suspect they're, they're going to insure gift cards any more than the carriers, but I don't know that for sure. You'd have to check with your specific alternate insurance carrier. Um, so please make sure that you are um, insuring properly. We and, and I call it insurance. It's declared value coverage, but unless you're using alternate insurance. We've all had that lady that comes in and wants to send a, a blanket, a quilt or an afghan or something that, you know, is homemade and they, you say, how much is it worth? Well, it's priceless. Well, technically, a priceless thing you can't even ship. So you certainly can't insure. Um, something like that, they would probably cover the materials only, not the work or labor involved. So please be aware of that. Um, one of somebody who I won't mention said, the only time I don't put dimensions in is first class package. You need to put it in for first class package. I'm warning you right now. You need to put it in for first class package. Um, first class package, um, commercial versus first pl class package retail actually has different parameters for size. So retail is kind of wide open, but the lesser one, the one that, where you get a discount on, that one has some limits. So please be sure and enter dimensions for everything. All right. Okay. Next one, selling cubic rate. So I've done a whole webinar on this. I'm going to do an updated webinar this year on this, but I'm just going to share with you um, especially for you newbies or those that haven't caught my webinar. And I know it's it's burdensome to go back and listen to an hour long webinar. But this one is one if that I really think that everybody should should watch and understand. You on your screen, unless somebody has removed it, have two options with small priority mail packages. Um, one has the CR in the corner and that stands for cubic rate. And that means that the size that you have entered um, allows this package to be available for cubic rate pricing. And usually in your software, it'll be much cheaper. Now, even though I've preached this, you would think, oh, well, I don't do that, or my store doesn't do that, or what's what in the world store does that? Um, we get some reports occasionally from, well, probably frequently, but reports about Indicia. And I did a review on one Monday in April, I think it was April, April or early May, 775 cubic rate packages were selected in Postalmate and sent through, you know, through Indicia. 700, that's 775 mistakes. Now, I'll, I'll, I'll retract that. Let's say 100 of them might be what I, what I describe in the webinar as um, soft packs, and they were okay. That means there were 675 mistakes made. Uh, where the store lost money. Here's what I mean by that. So um, this is the in the upper right corner on your rate comparison screen. And so you'll see the cost on this one is $20.58. And so you're making a profit of $9. On this one, um, you can see that your cost is $25 and you're making $17. Well, here's what I want you to notice. The C number is the published rate. In other words, that's what you would pay if you went into the post office and asked for this service. So on the right-hand side, you, your customer would pay $30.65 if they stood in line and did it at the post office. On the left-hand side, it says zero. And the reason it says zero is because it's not available at the post office. So these rates over here are not even available at the post office. So if, if your customer went to the post office, $30.65 is what they would pay for this item. You can charge whatever you, you want. I just, you know, and my rates don't really mean anything. I, I, I'm just saying at my imaginary store, I would charge $42.94 for this. But here's the thing, because this qualifies for cubic rate, Indicia in their back end doesn't know that you selected 
or actually they do know, but they, they're in, the important thing is that you selected priority mail to them. They will check and see if it's cheaper for them to place a cubic rate wholesale on it, this, this number right here. And you can see it is. This one's 20, this one would cost you 25. This one would cost you $20.58. Indicia works magic in the background and actually charges you for the cubic rate, even though you selected the pri regular priority mail. That's a good thing. What that does, and that means you want to always select the regular priority mail and never select cubic rate with one exception that I'll talk about in that, in that webinar that's recorded. So in this case, by, check, by selecting the regular priority mail, here's what happens. You charge your customer, let's say $42.94, you're gonna get charged the $20.58, and in this case, you're gonna make $21.96 profit. That's a deal, folks. If you can make that on every package, if you can make that kind of a margin, you know, we will all be driving Mercedes in no time. <laughs> so this is, this is good. The question is, isn't cubic rate better for your customers? Let me ask you, why would your customer ever know about cubic rate? They wouldn't. It's not available to them. It is not available to the public. It is a, an advantage that should be bent, that you as the store owner should, should benefit from not necessarily your customer. Remember, and, and this is so hard for newer store owners to understand, your goal is to be a super service oriented and super convenient for your customers. You're not going to be super price competitive. There is, you are the Starbucks of the shipping world. You look great, you act great, you give great service, you love your customers to death, and they're happy with that. You are not the Kmart. Remember, Kmart went out of business. You are not the Kmart in this industry. You cannot survive in this industry by undercutting anybody else. Um, you need to make those margins. Here's the deal, and, and this is true for almost everybody with very few exceptions. Lowering your prices does not bring in a whole bunch more people. Marketing brings in more people, not lowering your prices. This is not a, an industry. I'm not saying you don't have people who price shop. Of course you do. We all have those people that price shop. But out of 100 customers, you might have one or two that price shops. Now, they're going to be the noisy ones that make a fuss with you. And so you're going to hear from them. So it's going to seem like there's a lot more of them than there really are. But most people just want to get that darn package out of their hands and on their way. I'm not saying to gouge your customers. I always hear that from newbies. Well, I don't want to be thought of as gouging my customers. I get that. But there's a place where you need to make a reasonable, you need to make enough money to stay in business. That's all there is to it. If you're making, if your margins are so small, your customers will be thrilled, but you'll be out of business because that doesn't bring in new customers. It just doesn't. Um, so marketing is what does that. Now, if you get to a point where you're bringing in 500 customers a day and, you know, if you want to have lower margins, you can, but that generally doesn't happen. Most of our stores bring in between 20 and hundred customers a day, depending. Um, it depends on the breadth of your services. If you do a lot of printing, you tend to bring in a few more customers than if you are, pr are primarily pack and ship, but that doesn't change the fact that lowering your prices. Now, I will tell you that if your prices are outrageous, that will scare customers away and you will have less customers from that. But there is a sweet spot and your job is to find that sweet spot. We'll come back to this shortly. Okay. Ah, number five. Okay, here we go. Article not in standard container. This is really important. Um, you need to know what is and is not a standard container. I had a customer contact me this week um, and right here is where it is on your screen. And this is on the dimensions packaging screen and make sure you check that if, remember the only thing Postal Mate cannot check for you is if it's in a standard container, it can't see. So let's talk about what's not a standard container. So bucket, pail, wooden crate, metal toolbox, a guitar case, suitcase, rolled up rug, tube, padded envelope number seven, okay? Those are all not standard containers for UPS and FedEx. 
So you need to check that box for these items. I had a customer who's who's been with us for a while contact me this week saying, I just shipped a package and it was a tube and I sent it UPS and I got hit with a $15 surcharge. Is that right? And, and if so, when did that happen? Well, it happened a couple of years ago, well, several years ago. And yes, it's right. It's in their terms and conditions. So um, you need to read each of the carrier's terms and conditions, but make sure that you understand if it's not in a standard box or in, a, in an envelope that is like a number six or smaller, then it's going to have additional handling. Um, yes, we have heard that UPS assesses service uh, as a surcharge for brown paper on the outside of the box. I Okay, so <laughs> not to, to age me or anything, but I've been in the industry now 37 years. I got my first store in 1986. And back in those days, the older generation who are not with us any longer, but the older generation would bring in their packages, not only wrapped in brown paper, but also tied with twine um, or bigger packages, even with rope sometimes. And, you know, we were, you have to be, this is the, you know, this, this is the golden generation that has, has left. Um, uh, and they, um, we, we actually would wait until the customer left and then we would tear all the paper off and tear the rope or twine off because it would be an extra charge. And that's because those things can get caught in their conveyor belts. Not only does it cause damage to their system, but then it throws that package off or it crunches that package or other things. So yes, paper on the outside is a no-no. And remember, just as a kind of a tip here, um, Writing on the outside of the box is fine, unless that writing is something that the carrier is not allowed to accept. For example, your customer dumpster dives and finds a motor oil box or a bleach Clorox bleach box or an old whiskey box or something like that. Those are not acceptable. Even if you scribble those that writing out, it's technically not acceptable. Sorry, I've got a tickly nose. Um, the carrier is required to believe that the contents are what is stated on the outside of the box, even if it's scribbled out. So I'm not saying you can't use those boxes, although it's best not to. If you do, you have to like put those white labels all over it, which is a complete waste of white labels. Um, it's just better to tell the, tell the customer that um, the carrier won't accept it in this box because of the of the label on the outside, even though even if we scribble it out or blank it out, it has to be reboxed. And your customer will, because I know your customers, they were my customers too. They'll they'll be thinking, she's just saying that because she wants me to buy a box. So if you get that feeling from them, you can say, if you want, if you have another box in your garage, maybe an Amazon box or something you'd like to use, um, you know, I can hold it here and you can bring it in and we can repackage it, or I can just sell you one and we can do it here. Usually they'll opt for you just selling one, but if you give that option to them, um, it makes them think a little bit better. I'm not saying to always say that. I'm saying just if you get that feeling that they're thinking that you're trying to rip them off because that's really not the intent, but you do have to do right by the carrier and the customer here. Um, yeah, strapping, metal handles, thank you for the reminder, all those kinds of things. Anything exterior on the box um, needs to be, I've had boxes, you've had, we've all had boxes. A good example of that is a, um, uh, when you buy a new monitor for your computer, you know, they come in those real slim boxes. A lot of times they have a built-in handle. Now, first of all, those boxes should be reboxed into another box. But let's say that somebody reused that box and had, I don't know, something in it that was okay. Um, that handle on the top, you would want to tape it down flat so it didn't pop up during shipping. Okay. All right. So another, another way you, you might be losing money is on your rate comparison screen, not organizing it in a way that is beneficial for your store. Please don't think that you owe any fairness to your customer by giving them all the options um, even the ones that are not necessarily in their best interests. Um, so for example, let's look at this rate comparison screen. I hate it when I go to a, go to a store or log into a store's um, computer and see this on the rate comparison screen. Um, there, the services, let's say there's a, um, this is a, um, an iPhone that somebody's sending. 
okay, and they want to get it there second day air. Well, um, you have, to, especially if the customer can see this screen or if you have employees, because employees like to take the lazy way out and off, always offer the cheapest. So you've got six things on this that are not going to be in the best interest of your customer sending this iPhone. And in fact, this iPhone is a, is a birthday present um, and his birthday is on Friday. So now you know it needs to go second day air. You've got six services here that you have to get through before you can get to services that even begin to work for this customer, um, be beneficial for this customer. So I highly recommend you remove these services from your main screen. I did not say remove them from Postalmate. I said just remove them from this main screen so that they don't interrupt the flow of you selling what best works for your store and your customer. What works best for your customer? Folks, the, what works best for your customer is those services that you know will get there in a timely way and have good, a good reliable service behind them. So that's why I got rid of media mail. First of all, media mail, you can't send an iPhone media mail. That is not gonna fly. If the postal inspectors can open media mailboxes up and if they find an iPhone in there, they're going to upgrade it to whatever they want to upgrade it to. And then, and then they'll back bill you. It's not a nice thing. It'll delay the package and you run into all kinds of risks. There. Just don't do it. Um, so you need to, to get rid of, I would recommend getting rid of these six things from your main screen and then it will organize and I'll show you what it'll look like. Oh, and never ever, oh, remember we talked earlier. Let me go back. That cubic rate, we're going to take that completely off the screens. And now your screen's going to look like this. And so you can easily see what services you want to send for this customer. And you can see there's your two second day air options that are going to get there. And I did this at screenshot yesterday. So it says Thursday, but today's being Wednesday on second day air, it would get there on Friday. Um, so all these can be arranged and the place to go if you've got a pencil or pen is um, and I, I, when I, afterwards, I'll try to go there, but you're going to go up here to tools and this is a screenshot, so I can't do it. Tools, postal mate settings, shipping settings, service display. And so we'll go there afterwards. If you remind me, Darren, I'm counting on you to remind me. Uh, Gina says a number seven padded envelope is a non-standard container. Yes, it is. Um, okay. Do, do, do get back on my track here. Number seven, not updating Postmate Windows. Now you might think, wah, 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 what's the big deal? So I'm gonna tell you another funny story. Oh, I'm full of stories. Um, I went to do my taxes this year, and yes, I'm still waiting for my tax refund. Thank you very much, IRS. But anyway, I went to do my taxes this year, and I got out my personal laptop, and I don't, honestly, I don't pull it out very often, and I know that sounds terrible, but I'm, you know, I'm a kind of a workaholic, so I'm at my work computer all the time, and I went to do my taxes, and I use TurboTax, so I put TurboTax, and it just, it, it wouldn't load, and it was waiting, and so on and so forth, and I went, and the disk space was at 100%, and I couldn't do anything, and I did this, and I played around with it for days trying to figure it out, and oh my gosh, I find I had to give up. It turns out I had pending window up, Windows updates, and I thought maybe I was going to have to completely reformat the computer, and because of the disk space was being taken, and all this other technical stuff, and um, so I, I went ahead and did the Windows updates. And I will tell you, I was so far behind, probably a year. I was so far behind that it took two days to complete all the Windows updates. So it would do one, and then I'd have to go back and redo the next do the next one because it was so old it wouldn't even kick in and do the next one automatically and so in two days later and now i look and the disk space is down to about seven percent and everything runs smooth and it really wor works really well so when we tell you that keeping your windows updates updated is important it really is and i can tell you that on my personal computer i can attest to that it, it's very important to keep your post mate updated um, if you still are on Windows 7 on any of your workstations, I'm going to encourage you to upgrade. And upgrade means buying a new computer, not just moving to Windows 10 on that computer. Um, some of the older computers, if you have an older computer working running Windows 7, um, remember, every time Microsoft releases an update, um, that update is bigger just like Postmate. Our Postmate update is bigger. Windows 7, older Windows 7 computers, if they, if you put Windows 10, especially now Windows 10 on it, and especially with the updates that are coming this summer with Windows 10, 
um, on that older computer, it's almost going to take, in mo many cases, it will take almost all the resources of that computer just to run Windows. And then there won't be much left over to run Postmate or other things. So I want you, everybody should have computers that are, um, your master workstation should never be more than three years old and your auxiliaries never more than six years old, preferably five. I'd like you to, so basically rotate through. But I'm going to, and I'll tell you why we really want you to move from Windows 7 to 10 in a little bit. We'll get back to that. And then updating Postmate. I cannot tell you, um, this is me with my laptop, sorry about that, how many people don't properly update Postmate. Now, you might think that just clicking a few buttons and make, letting the update run is all there is to it, but it's not. Um, many of our updates require that you take action other than running the update. There's running the update and then there's things to do. And it never fails periodically through the year and yet every single month, in fact, I would say every couple of weeks, I'll find a store where they have not been properly updating during rate time, that December, January rate time change. Um, and it turns out that they're using last year's rates. And in fact, I will tell you, I had a store about four weeks ago, three weeks ago. Um, I was able to, I, they, they, their rates weren't matching their bill. They suddenly decided to reconcile their bill and their rates weren't matching anything and they were concerned and they called and I got in and I was able to go into their logs and I'm able to go into your logs and see when you last did what's called the QSRU, Q, quick, QRSU, Quick Rate Setting Utility, and they hadn't done it in five years. Five years. They were using rates that were five years old, folks. Um, no store is going to make good money on that kind of a deal. Rates have gone up so much. I warned them their rates are really going to go up a lot when they, you know, when they get updated because they're basically jumping all those years. But folks, it, it's not hard. The update guides that are put out now, it, they might look the same to you all the time. Only the first page is how to do the update. The second page on will tell you the special things to do with this particular update. So we have minor updates, which are, which are basically maintenance fixes and small tweaks. You should always glance at the update guide for that. But for major updates, especially anything with rate changes, make sure you read every single after, especially after page two, every single page and become familiar with it. It's really important. Um, if you ever want to know what your postal mate version is, you can go up to the top to help and about, and it will tell you, you can see how this one is 11.12.4.6. This also, by the way, will show you what your um, tier levels are set at in Postmate. And remember, just because your tier level is set that in Postmate does not mean that that's what the carrier has you at, okay? Because you're in, you're in charge of setting it in Postmate. So when the carrier tells you you're a tier four, you need to go in Postmate and set that to tier four. Um, UPS recently changed to one tier for everybody. Thank goodness, that's really lovely. I'm hoping and praying one day that FedEx and DHL will do the same thing because it sure makes it easier. Next one is scales. And this is particularly true for our newbies. Um, ooh, I want to go back. So you may have one of these other scales. Um, I want to encourage you to um, see the one that's down there that says legal for trade. If you have any of those other scales or anything other than a legal for trade scale, you need to not have it visible in your store. And here's why. Um, every state has a state and measures or weight and measures department. And those people generally, you may have to send in a, and get a scale certificate, but they will randomly visit your store. It might be once a year. It may be twice a year. It might be once every five years. In my state, they came around every two to three years. And they would come to your scale and they would have the, break out their weights and they would measure and make sure that that your scale was calibrated good and all that stuff. And then they would update your sticker and they have a sticker on your scale. Different states do it a little bit differently, but most of them are something like that. The important thing is you cannot use just any scale in our industry. So the one on the lower left, for example, is one that stamps.com gives you when you open an account. And that's lovely, but that's not to be used in our store. That's if, if you had, let's say you were an insurance company and you were the receptionist for the insurance company. This is a great scale for you. You set it on and, and you know how many stamps to put on the envelopes for your insurance people to send out because you're not reselling that postage to the public. It's for in-office use. 
Um, when you do legal for when you do retail and resell shipping services and post office services, you must have a scale that is legal for trade. Um, and please don't skip around with that. Um, Uh, by the way, for uh, certain franchises, uh, thank you, that's a great reminder. Certain franchises do not have tiers at all anymore. Okay, so certain franchisees do not have tiers. So don't, if you are of a specific franchise and you know who you are, um, you may not have a tier, you may have one level. Thank you for that reminder, sir. Um, okay, so make sure that you have a legal for, for trade scale. The ones supported in PostalMate are all legal for trade. And in fact, if you look at the front of your PostalMate screen, in the lower left corner, you'll see some gray letters and numbers. That's our certification as a software for the scales. So um, it's, it's a real big legal thing to go through and it's a real pain in the neck. But you must use a legal for trade and not every scale is the same okay so make sure that you're using that one or one similar to it all any of the ones supported by postmate here's where we get to um the scales. so i'm just going to go through the most common ones there's the ps60 that's the older one the p uh <laughs> ps6l um is an upgraded version of that. And then there's a BC60 and a BC6L, and I think I'm saying these wrong, but it's the 60 six and 6L. Here's the deal. Some, the six zeros, those are legal for trade for pounds, for weights for packages, but not for letters. It is not sensitive enough for letters. The 6L, is sen more sensitive and sensitive enough for letters. In fact, the 6L is so sensitive that um, I'm in Arizona and in my stores, we had ceiling fans in our store. In fact, you don't, uh, the only rooms in the house that don't have ceiling fans are bathrooms. And honestly, bathrooms need them too because <laughs> we always need moving air. So um, we had ceiling fans in the store and just the weight of the ceiling of the air pushing down on that scale would make it frequently go to, you know, the dash, dash, dash that we get sometimes would actually push. That's how sensitive in it. It felt the air on the scale pushing down on it. So the 6L is legal for trade for envelopes. And where it gets real funny is remember a one, there's a one ounce for a first class letter, one ounce, two ounce, three ounce, and then three and a half ounce. And that's that half ounce that has a problem uh, especially on that other scale, the six zero scale. So everybody should have at least one six L scale. Um, if I could, I'd wave a magic wand and you would all have six L scales, the more sensitive ones, because then you don't have to worry about, about the weight of letters on any scale. Um, but most of us do have, especially if your store has been around a while, um, so at least one six zero scale. No problem with that. Just make sure that if it's a lightweight letter, you do it on the more sensitive scale. Now, having said that, the six zero scales, um, and if you wanna know what yours is, the, the metal lid on that is a lid. You can lift off that lid straight up very carefully and dead in the center, there's crossbars. So dead in the center is a um, label and it will tell you the serial number and the model number and all those things ab about it. Um, so that's how you can know which one you have. But for the most part, um, the older scales read out in pounds and tenths of pounds. See that? So 1.25 pounds. So 1.25 pounds is not one pound and two and a half ounces. That's not correct. The newer scales weigh in pounds and ounces. So 1.25 pounds is equal to one pound four ounces. And we can see that on this chart to the right. So 0.25 equals four ounces. Um, it, it doesn't, you know, because it's not metric, because it's imperial, <laughs> there's 16 ounces to the pound. Um, not everything ends in those lovely tens and zeros. And so uh, a quarter, this is basically saying it's, it's a quarter of a pound and a quarter of a pound is four sixteenths. So four ounces. So we're going to go through a few of these and I want you to grasp this and then I'm going to gift, gift to you something. How's that? We, we all like gifts, right? So 
If your scale weighs in pounds and tenths of pounds, that's fine. Don't get rid of the scale, but just understand there's a conversion to do. You only really need this conversion if you're doing filling out a customs form that requires weight. And not all customs forms require weight, but mail does, for example. So one pound, eight, one point eight four pounds. So um, that we look over on the chart and see down at the bottom. So that's going to be 14 ounces. So on a other scale, it would weigh one pound, 14 ounces. And that's how you would enter it on the customs form. If it was 1.02 pounds, well, that's like a piece of paper over one pound is what it is. And so we look on the chart. So that's one pound and one ounce. So that would look like this on the other scale. Okay. And then this one, 1.29. And if we go over here, you can see that's five. So up to 0.3125, that's five ounces. So that would weigh one pound, five ounces. And that's what you would enter on the customs form. So my gift to you is I know you want to take your scissors and cut out this chart. So if you go to our website, um, postmate.com and go to the postmate side and go to the help center you can put in um, just search for conversion chart or pounds chart or ounces chart or something like that um, and one of those words should any of those words should bring up this chart and you can print it out and cut it out and, and tape it by your scale or wherever you by your computer wherever you need to <clears throat> okay um, Ah, thank you, Mike. Mike O'Malley from Olson and Ives. Thank you for joining us, Mike. He's giving me some heads up on there. The new BC60, remember I said it's only good for packages. It won't even weigh a one ounce letter. So it's, and that's to protect you, I'm sure, so that you don't mess up on, on those letters. So be aware that you need a, a 6L <laughs> and Mike from Olson and Ives can help you with that. He's the scale person. And I know scales are expensive. I get that. But let me tell you, scales last forever. They're like, you know, dinosaurs. They never die. And when they do, they become diamonds in the rough. Um, they will go ahead and um, make that once in a while purchase for a new scale. This is the year to do it. Um, make sure you're upgraded. Um, okay. Okay. Let's see, time in transit. So this is really important in the time in transit. Um, service failure refunds are still partially suspended by all carriers. They were suspended last March and April, and for the most part are still suspended. They are bringing back some service failure refunds on some services. It's up to you to figure out. Postmates going to still give you the time and transits quoted by the carrier. That doesn't mean it's guaranteed by the carrier, okay? It's just quoted by the carrier. So you need to make sure that you have some good writing in your disclaimer so that you don't get into trouble. I seriously had a customer a few weeks ago that was wanted to give such good customer service support that they gave a service failure refund to their customer because um, something they sent didn't get there in time, even though they're not getting any money back from the carrier. And while that's nice, here's the thing. Their customer was still disappointed because their item didn't get there. Getting money back, while that's nice, it doesn't make the thing get there on time. And so there was still that disappointment. I want you to not disappoint your customer in the first place. And to do that, I want you to make sure that you have a, a nice prominent sign posted and framed. Don't you dare stick a piece of paper up on without a frame. Frame that thing and make sure that your customers know that um, time and transits are estimates only during COVID. Um, and service failure, the, the carriers are generally not guaranteeing their services, okay? So you can check with the carriers because these change rapidly. Um, in in CashMate, you can go into Tools, Options, Register Settings, and you can set your shipping disclaimer right here to include information about that. So you can add that information here um, so it's on the customer's receipt. But if you have in your software, your carriers broken down into different departments, like FedEx as a department, UPS as a department, here's something you may not be aware of. You can write a disclaimer specifically for a carrier. Yes, indeed. So if you go into edit department and pull up that carrier, 
<clears throat> you're going to see a, a, something you may have never noticed. Now, it's been there for a while, but we just really haven't talked about it much. Right up here, there's a special tab for disclaimer. And so you can type in a disclaimer just for FedEx and a unique one just for post office and a unique one just for DHL. So if you weren't aware of that, you, um, you can make these special disclaimers. So maybe you need to do something special for DHL or special for post office, I, especially post office. I like, I like the idea of having a special one for post office. So there you go. And that's an edit department and then choose that carrier. If all of your mapping is done just to the shipping department, then you can just edit the shipping department if you want. So just an idea. Okay, not charging enough. So this goes back on my last rant and rave about stores that don't charge enough. And we often think that we, you know, we, we want, first of all, let me just tell you my absolute Karen's motto. And I'm unKaren, by the way, because it's not nice to be a Karen anymore. My unKaren's motto is to charge as much as you can while retaining customer loyalty. There is a sweet spot, and your job is to find that sweet spot. Don't guess. Just because you won't buy a coffee at Starbucks doesn't mean your customer won't. Don't shop with your purse. Um, I might be a super thrifty person but that doesn't mean my customers will be. If they're coming into your store, it's because they value convenience. Will you have that one that will be outraged by your prices? Of course you will. We had a very famous customer many years ago who, who said, if you don't have at least one customer complain a day about your prices, then your prices aren't high enough. And there's some truth to that. I've never heard anybody go into Starbucks and say, oh, gee, $5.95, what a great value. It just doesn't happen, right? Um, it just is what it is. And that's what you need to say. Now, your customer might say to something like, gosh, 1985, that's a lot of money. Now at Starbucks, they don't say, well, yeah. Um, um, well, we have to pay for the lights and we have to pay for the baristas and we have to pay for the pretty decorating here and we have to pay for the franchise fee and we have to pay for the, for the Starbucks name. And we have to, they don't go through all that. What they did, you know, here's what you do. Yeah, cost of shipping's really gone up. Yeah, cost of coffee's really gone up. How else can I help you today? Would you like fries with that? Would you like stamps with that? So you make it work. You come up with the terminology and think about it ahead of time so you're prepared because they will always catch you off guard. Think about it ahead of time. You have customers, honest to goodness, they would never go into Dillard's or into Macy's and say, well, that's ridiculous. Why do you charge that much to the clerk, right? Because the clerk's just a clerk. They don't know, but yet they come into your store and they whine and complain and moan and groan. And I will also tell you that the more wealthy your customer and in your neighborhood, the more you hear complaining. That is the truth. And the reason is they got wealthy from understanding the value of money. So appreciate that, recognize that. They're not necessarily looking for a discount. Of course, everybody wants one and they might be fishing a little, but they're not expecting a discount when they say that. They're just looking for some compassion here and agreement. And so agree with them. Yeah, price of shipping really has gone up, um, you know? And, and right now with, you know, in, with, with what's happening in the world, I don't think too many people are gonna question it. Okay. Um, they may complain, but they still pay. Thank you, Gina. That's very good. So your rates are top secret. They are what, what you say they are. It's up to you to, to decide what your rates are going to be. Um, when you get to the rate comparison screen, you make sure and look and keep an eye on the A, C, and D numbers, especially the A and D. A is your cost according to as long as you have everything set right in Postmate, and D is your profit. And so on this package, let's zoom it up a little bit more, um, $37.21 is what I'm going to charge the customer. You can see my cost is $16.19, so I'm making a profit of $21.02. You can see that's a little bit more than double what my cost is, so probably a margin of around 55 or so percent. I don't know exactly, but probably pretty close in there. Um, that's probably common in the industry right now, somewhere around there. I can tell you that if you're charging less than double your cost, 
you're probably in most cases going to have a hard time making your bills. Now, I can't tell you what to charge in your store. And every business model is very different from the next one. It's one of the weird things about our industry is, you know, you go to a dry cleaners. Well, a dry cleaners is a dry cleaner. They do dry cleaning, right? But you go to a shipping store and maybe they do printing and maybe they rent self storage units and maybe they do freight and maybe they do all kinds of other things um, other than just pack and ship. And so the model is so different that the price can be very different. We even have stores, um, oddly enough, that have zero markup because they are university stores for the students and staff and they don't, uh, they don't charge a markup. So we have a whole bunch of different things going on. So make sure that you're charging enough. And um, if you can't pay your bills and stay in business, then what's the point? Um, you deserve to make a living. And so make sure that you're charging enough. I can tell you this. Um, nine out of 10 stores that go out of business are not charging enough. That, that's Karen's estimate, but I've been in around an awful long time that you got to respect the idea that I've probably heard a thing or two in my life. Um, most of them just don't charge enough. And it's the old, it's the old, but I don't want to, I don't want to charge too much. I don't want them to not like me. Folks, your lawyer, your doctor, your accountant, they're not worried about you liking them for their, their money. You, you give over the top service, love them to death, be good to them, have a beautiful clean store that they would love to come into again and again. Make sure it looks pretty, it smells pretty. You should be repainting every few years, recarpeting every five to eight years. You know, Make sure you keep up on all that stuff and give them a reason to want to pay you that money. Make it worth it. Okay. This one is a pet peeve of mine. We have stores that do not enter a full return address in the system when they're shipping a package. Sometimes they just pick their store or sometimes um, um, so for some packages, they even skip it all together. There are occasions when you'll get a label with that. Folks, entering the, the return address or the customer's information is a carrier requirement. It's also required by the carrier that you see the ID for each of those customers and Postmate um, just so you are aware, especially if you're a newbie, here are the rules about the return address on labels. For UPS and FedEx domestic, so that means within the 50 United States, domestic packages, it is required that your store address be the return address. Okay, that is a requirement. We can't change that. For international packages through UPS and FedEx, for all DHL packages, and for all post office packages, if you choose, the customer's return address can be the return address and should be. So those are the requirements. Um, and getting that photo ID is, an, is a requirement. If you have purchased a store before and you're not seeing um, this come up on occasion, um, then your previous store owner probably turned it off probably a good idea to turn it back on because it is a requirement. Now, I can tell you that nobody, I don't think anybody from UPS or FedEx is going to come around and police you in this um, and make sure that you're checking ID, although they have had that happen in the past. But let me tell you when this becomes a really big deal. Um, every few years, there is a bad guy in this country that ships a package that has some really bad substance, a bomb or a harmful substance, and it's going to somebody important, and it either something really bad happens or with luck, it's caught before something really bad happens. It becomes public information. It goes on all the news, and what happens is Congress starts looming down on top of UPS, FedEx, and the post office and saying, what are you doing to make sure that this doesn't happen? Well, this rule about ID was one of the things that came as a result of one of those bad actors several years ago. So it would be at that time that the carriers are saying, well, <coughs> excuse me, we have this rule and we're going to make sure that everybody's following it. <laughs> excuse me. And they will send out people to check and um, basically store shop and make sure that you're doing it at that time. So just make it a habit. Just do what you're supposed to do. I know it's a pain. You only have to see, you don't enter their ID. You only have to see a picture ID. That's all there is to it. Okay. Declared value and customs value. This, you can really lose your shirt if you're not careful with how you enter values for international packages. 
You need to know the things that you cannot ensure, which we've already talked about. You need to know that things have a limit. You need to know what the contents are, especially of international packages. You need to understand the difference between declared value and customs value, so DV versus CV. And finally, you need to ask, ask or find out if that item is allowed in that country. And it's really weird. There are things that are just not allowed in certain countries. And it's not something that you can think um, is uh, would make sense. For example, if you're sending a care package to um, somebody in, let's say, Lebanon, okay, you cannot include um, Levi's blue jeans in it. Okay, that Wranglers would be okay. Lee jeans would be okay. Guest jeans would be fine, but Levi jeans, no. So you need to know the parameters of what is and isn't allowed. You need a source. You need to bookmark some sources where you can quickly look up things. Now, your customer doesn't necessarily have to be there standing there while you go through all these things and make sure. I always recommend with your international packages, you double check the phone number that they've provided you and, they, and say, is this a good num phone number for you? Yes, it is. Okay. Well, then later today, I have to go through and make sure that th this country, you know, and everything's kosher. <laughs> no pun intended. Everything is okay to be sending to these this country and so on and so forth. If there's any questions, this number is one I can get a hold of you on yet, right? Yes. If you don't hear from me, just know that everything's fine and it's on its way and you can track it starting tonight. Those are great things to say to your customer because they're spending a lot of money with you to make sure that their package gets to their international location. So please do take care in knowing. Um, if it's just documents, then I'm not so worried about it. But a lot of times it's things and you have to check on this stuff. So declared value and customs value. Declared value is how much you, you're going to insure it for if it should be lost or damaged in transit, okay? So you ask your customer, how much is this thing worth? Oh, about $500 if it's broken. Okay, so it's a laptop, let's say. Okay, well, um, then you can enter the customs value as the same. It doesn't have to be the same though. But here's what you can't do. You can't say, um, how much is this thing worth? Oh, $500. Okay, so we're gonna tell customs it's worth $50 so that there's not a lot of duties and taxes. That's a no. In fact, Postalmate will stop you from shipping it like this. You can't insure it for 500 and then lie to customs and tell them it's worth only 50. Okay, so the customs value has to be equal to or higher than the declared value. So in other words, if it's, let's say it's 500, how much do you want to insure it for? $500, okay. But it's actually worth $1,500. So maybe they have business insurance that would cover it, but there's a $500 deductible. So they want to insure it for 500, but it's worth 1,500. That's perfectly fine. Okay, so remember the customs value can be higher, but not lower than what you would insure it for or the declared value. Okay, on to descriptions of contents. So I'm good. The, the rules have completely changed. If you've watched my webinars this year, there's been a lot of international changes. So I'm just going to give you some advice. Every single line item, every single item in that package, you should have a three word or better description for that. Okay. I want you to avoid two and three letter words like hat, DVD, CD. Some carriers will not accept three letters or less. Okay. So um, men's baseball hat, that works. Okay. Musical CD, that works. Um, uh, Disney Family DVD, that works, okay? So avoid single words, avoid general descriptions. So things like, um, on the left here, shirt, pants, documents, phone, toys. Those are all wrong, 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 okay? Here we go. Men's cotton button down shirt, men's blue jeans, Lee, uh, business documents for assessment, Apple iPhone 12 new, 15 to toy plastic cars. Okay, those are the kinds of descriptions we now want. This is not a suggestion, 
this is becoming an absolute requirement. You will, there will be bad things that happen if you st don't start getting this specific with um, descriptions. The carriers, and because of customs in different countries, the carriers are requiring more and more information. Postalmate does not really know the words you enter there. However, the carriers scan the words and they have internal lists that they do not provide. And if you have a single item description that is just one of those words, it will reject the label. For example, papers. It will reject papers and many, many carriers will. Or just the word documents. It will reject that. Clothes. I've seen it reject that. Um, so those don't, personal artifacts, not acceptable. Household goods, not acceptable. You need to be specific. Um, the, the question was asked, will we have more space to describe? No, we won't. Um, you have to do the best you can on that form. Um, those forms are dictated and there's limitations by the carriers. However, if you need more information, you know how to print out a blank label from your um, machine and how to hand write some additional information on that. Or after the customs form prints, you know how to hand, there's nothing wrong with handwriting additional information in there. Okay. Okay, finally, Postalmate backups. I cannot tell you how important this is. We had a store this morning that had a master workstation crash. The last backup they had was 11.5. I want to say that was two years ago, maybe three years ago. They lost every transaction, rate change, everything between that time period and now. You must back up every single day. I want you to shut down Postalmate every day. Don't leave Postalmate running overnight. Shut it down on all workstations every single night. And, and very important, I want you to reboot your computers regularly. Ideally, every day, at least twice a week. I used to say once a week. I'm going to tell you twice a week now. Reboot twice a week. Um, Windows 10 tends to, Microsoft tends to uh, release their patches on Tuesday night. So we always end up on, when they do a patch, Wednesday morning we'll get more calls than usual because um, there, was a, there was a Windows update and it, it reset something or did something funky. Um, so make sure that you reboot regularly. That will help keep your systems running. I know it's a pain to reboot. I'm the queen of not rebooting. Um, <laughs> but rebooting really, really, really helps. As it for backups, we have this kind of snarky saying, but it's really true. There are those who do and those who will. Um, so please update. And when you are back up, when you back up every night, um, make sure that you're backing up to two locations. One, it's fine to be on your computer hard drive, but you, the second location should be to, uh, I'm going to tell you flat out, it should be a cloud location, Dropbox, Carbonite, iCloud, whatever it is. And that can be set up in PM, uh, Postmate Utilities, PM Utilities. Uh, if you want more information on that, remember that help center I told you to go to earlier on our website, go there again and enter the words backup and you'll get information on how to set your backup up, backups to two locations. It's okay to have it on a flash drive or an external hard drive, as long as you take that with you every night. But should your store, heaven forbid, burn down or a bad guy come into your store and steal your computer, they're not gonna politely take the flash drive or external hard drive out and leave it on the counter for you. They're gonna take it with it. So make sure that your data is safe. We do not have a copy of your data. That is yours, it belongs to you, only you have that. Um, okay, let's see here. Okay, remember that show? Okay, this tells you how old I am. This is about 100 years ago when I was young. Um, <laughs> I've got a secret. So here's my secret. Um, we are, uh, I told you earlier that we've been working on a, on a pr fairly big project in our uh, development team this year. And it's one where, um, yeah, I'm really excited about it, guys, but it's not, it's not, you're not going to be really excited about it because there's not anything, there's no glitter, <laughs> no rhinestones and sparkle on this. Um, but as you, you may be aware, 2020 was an extreme year for shipping. And 
we have gone through our statistics and shipping was up, for example, the last December, nearly 50%. So one and a half times the volume of the previous December and previous Decembers already, of course, stretch everybody's resources because, you know, they're December, right? This was an extreme year in an extreme circumstance. And we recognize that, um, that your store needs to run at really high levels and high speeds. So as you are probably aware, the Firebird database is the back end of your postal mate. And we are doing a project this year where we are updating that to the, you know, the best highest extremes we can so that it works the best possible throughout this season. Now we've updated in the past and it's a big project to update. We try to keep updated on it, but it's been a, it's been a couple of years since they've had an update on that. And so we have taken advantage of um, this year. And so we are doing an update on that and that'll be released, um, you know, I, early fall, I would say. So well before the holidays. Um, so it should make everything run more smooth and should, um, make things better during the holidays. It's not a big, it's not flashy and all that stuff, but it's really important and you'll appreciate it when, when you don't notice anything bogging down, that's when you'll appreciate it. So we're real, I'm really excited about this. However, remember earlier, I told you to start upgrading those Windows 7 computers. I do not believe, and I will, will get more information as we go on. I do not believe that Windows 7 will be compatible with this new backend Firebird um, database update. So Windows 10 will be required. Windows 8 probably will be fine if you're still running on that. We only have a few stores on Windows 8, but Windows 7 will probably not function on the new Firebird database. So it, now is the time to get new computers. And remember, it takes, during COVID and during this year, um, computers are kind of scarce. I mean, it, they're in high demand because everybody had to get a home computer to do work from home and there's still a, a slight shortage of it. So be scouting out computers. I, if I haven't said so earlier and I'll say so again, Mike at Olson and Ives can help you with the new computer. He knows exactly the specifications that are needed for Postmate. It's Olson Ives, O-L-S-O-N-I-V-E-S dot com. And Please go there, and, and and I'm not saying you have to buy from him, but it's just really convenient to buy from him because he helps you get everything set up. Um, and get your computers, get those secondary computers upgraded. By the way, your strongest computer needs to be your master always, always, always. So make sure your newest, best one. Um, and I'm not saying you have to spend a fortune. Get one that's really good and one maybe that's mediocre. <laughs> that's fine. But get that one that's really good for your new master workstation. And then in three years, retire it to a secondary position and get a new really good master workstation. And then just keep going like that. Windows 10 appears to be, from what I'm told by my development team, and they love correcting me. So, And they did that this week. Um, from what I'm told, Windows 10 is going to be around for a, quite a long time. What Microsoft doing is doing is just updating it and sending you updates um, frequently on it rather than releasing a whole new Windows operating system. So we can expect that to continue. So um, I think this is a, just a good time to update all, all your computers. If you're running a Windows 10 computer on your master now, but Windows 7 on your others, maybe it's time for one new really good master workstation and retire that master to a secondary position. Um, and again, order early. Don't, don't be caught this early fall. When I say early fall, early fall to me is, is September-ish. <laughs> give, give or take six weeks. Um, uh, don't be caught trying to order then and there be a shortage. So please get sooner rather than later. And um, thank you, Darren. Okay, we're going to go there. Uh, earlier, I mentioned also, um, where do you get this information about how to find out this information? You should be once a year reviewing all the service um, agreements with your, with your carrier, that's your contract, your specific ASO, FASC, those type of contracts, but also the service guide or terms and conditions guide by the carriers. Um, those are all available online. Um, and that's where you can get all the information that I provided you today. And then we have this one, time for questions. And we are, and you know what? When I designed this, that questions actually fit on the TV screen and it doesn't now. And I, I promise you, my vision is not getting that poor. So <laughs> sorry for that. Um, 
we are going to uh, uh, <laughs> David, shut up. <laughs> And so we're get, we're open to questions now, and I am going to go and I'm going to show Darren and others how to um, adjust that screen so media mail and other things aren't on your main rate comparison screen. So in my Postalmate, we're going to go up to Tools, Postalmate Settings. This is on your master workstation only. Tools, Postalmate Settings, and then right dead in the middle, Shipping Settings. Okay. Then we're going to come over here to Service Display. So this first one is on my regular rate comparison screen. It's the first screen that comes up. You can name it whatever you want. I think it comes from us named like multi-carriers or all carriers. I think it says all carriers. You can change that to whatever you want. I've named mine best services. So whatever works for you. And then over here, whatever is checkmarked with a black box, will uh, everything, every service by that carrier will appear. Anything that's a gray box, only selected services will appear. How do you get to that gray? Well, you click the little weird arrow that's in front of the box. And sometimes it takes a little maneuvering with the mouse, it's a little sensitive. So you click on that and you can see they all open up. And you will notice I have almost everything unchecked except, in fact I do, everything unchecked here but priority mail. That's the only one I have selected because that's a pretty good service and I get a discount on it. So I'm willing to sell that in most circumstances to my customer. So that's the one I'm going to show on my main screen. Now, folks, I know you sometimes need to send first class or media mail or anything else. I'm not saying get rid of it. It's over here. It's right here on your U.S. mail. In fact, it's gray again. Well, why is it gray? Well, now I've excluded services I don't want to sell. I never want to sell GXG, Global Express Guaranteed. I hate that service. I will tell you not to sell that service if you want me to tell you privately. And I will tell you that later this year, this will be leaving Postmate. You can't even process it through Indicia. So GXG. Uh, but I removed cubic rate because I don't want to show cubic rate because I don't want to be tempted by that lower price. I don't want my customer to see the lower price. And I want to take advantage of the magic that Indicia does behind the scenes. Now, I'm not saying I don't have cubic rate anywhere on my screens. I just don't have it here because I don't want my customer to see it. Well, over here on other, and you you could have cubic rate show up. And look at that. There it is. Now, I would never show this to my customer. But if I wanted to see what it looked like after the customer left, I could. If I have employees, I'd probably just remove, remove cubic rate completely from my screens. Remember, the magic still happens. Please, if you don't understand what I'm saying, and I know I don't have time to explain the whole thing, go watch the cubic rate webinar that is recorded and on our website, and you will understand about that magic because it really can save you a lot of money. Okay, hopefully that did everything. <sighs> Uh, okay, and um, one of our anonymous customers wanted me to show you another fact, and that is when you're shipping, and remember, I want you to always enter the full um, information of the return address for the customer. When we select this customer, in this case, well, you know what, I'm going to select a different customer because, uh, do, 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 do. here we go. Okay, this one. So when I go over here, there's this little button right down here, show only records for this customer. And this becomes their private address book. So only addresses that that customer has sent to before is going to appear here. And it is a magic thing because they'll come back to you because you have their addresses. You become their private address book. It's a great loyalty enhancement for your customer. They could be across town, but nope, they're gonna come drive all the way to your store because you have all their addresses and know their people. And so they'll come all the way over to you. So that's a little magic button right down here. By the way, here's another magic button because I love to show magic buttons. Let's say we choose this guy and maybe um, we're gonna add the address to where he's shipping to, but maybe he's shipping to himself. You occasionally have that. Maybe somebody's visiting your area and they give you an address from, I don't know, New York City or something. And they're buying some stuff in, in the shops near you and they're sending it home to their home address. So you get to this point and say, okay, where are we sending it? Well, we're sending it to the address that I just gave you. Oh, well, can you tell me all that stuff again? Instead of having to say all that, you can enter their name here and just click down here, copy from customer. And it's going to end Look at that. It entered everything. Magic. How long has that been impulse to me? Oh, about 10 years. Mm -hmm. Not kidding. So there's all kinds of magic I love to show you when I can. 
Okay. Um, is Postmate going to have the QR code scanners available? Nancy, what QR codes are you talking about? What carrier, what, what service, what, what specific? QR codes, uh, the ability to um, read QR codes is not an issue. The, crea the ability to what happens with that QR code is the issue. Um, the Amazon QR code, no. Uh, <laughs> the Amazon QR code is not available to us or to you. You have to be a part of that program to be able to participate in it. It's not an option. It's not a, it's not a technology limitation. Um, it is a, 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 an invitation only. We can develop uh, a QR code reader. In fact, we have some right now um, so that Postmate can read QR codes and we'll have more coming because FedEx is doing some QR code stuff coming up. Post offices looking like they're going to be doing some QR codes coming up, and that stuff that is will become available to you. We will be implementing in Postmate, but the Amazon QR code is not available to you. You're not invited to participate. If you want to be invited, you have to get a hold of the high up guy at Amazon and say, "Please, will you invite me?" And I don't know his name or his phone number, so, <laughs> and I'm not being mean. It's just this is a question we get asked a lot. And it's not a Postmate thing, guys. This is a proprietary agreement between Amazon and the UPS store, and we have been purposefully excluded from that. So it has nothing to do with Postmate. So other QR codes, um, that technology is coming. There is QR codes with FedEx, and there is um, potentially QR codes with Post Office. But here's the deal. Those two carriers have to develop their side of the technology before we can develop our side. Here's what that means. And, and, and I know, so when you go to the FedEx office store, they have the ability to read a QR code, a FedEx QR code, because it's an internal um, technology that they use. But when they have talk, when they, when they deal with companies like ours, what are called third party softwares, they have to have an what's called an API. So technology that we can talk to, and it's not their in-house one, it's a separate one. That technology, they are still developing. So they have to do that so that when we scan it and send it to them, it means something something to them and get uh, retrieves the label and brings it back. So they are still, both USPS and FedEx are working on their end of that technology. Once that's done and they give us the, um, the codes to that, then we can develop for that. And yes, that is absolutely on our plate to do when they, as soon as they make it available to us. How do I send email notifications when we ship FedEx, for example? Email notifications set up are done right here. Tools, Postmate settings, email notifications. This is the setup. You can find tech notes on how to set it up on our website in the Help Center. Just type in email in the Help Center and that will populate. Once you set, have this all set up, you must do a carrier pickup. Carrier pickup at the end of the day is what will trigger those um, emails to go out. Um, Walmart QR codes. Oh, well, we don't have any work with Walmart, so I can't tell you about that. Uh, I have reviewed the DMM and it looks like a 12 by nine envelope with a few pieces of paper can be shipped as first class package retail. Is this right? No. Um, it, the limitation is it must be more thick than one quarter inch. So it has to, um, no, excuse me, more thick than three quarters of an inch to go package. Um, so if it's, if it's more than three quarters of an inch, yes. But if it's between one quarter of an inch, no, between flat and three quarters of an inch, it must be sent as a, a manila envelope or a flat. So, um, I would love that, David. I, I don't have the, an answer for that for now. Um, okay, wait a minute. All these are starting to skip around. <sighs> Uh, can we get longer description fields for customs forms? We can't because it is limited by the carrier, what, the carrier, what prints out for each carrier. So we have to look at basically all the carriers and choose the shortest of all the carriers, and that's what we're stuck with, and usually that's post office, guys. Uh, okay, Jacqueline, my, that might be special circumstance for you, but I don't think so. 
A newbie here, a customer came in with the toolbox, said he had sent it via FedEx with a tag on the outside of the package. No box or other packaging. Am I able to do this? You bet it is. Y yes, you can. It is a non-standard and you would have to select article not in standard container, but yes, you can put a, um, I highly recommend that you put, um, the if you put the label on a tag attached to it, I'm going to highly recommend you handwrite an address and the tracking number on the on a bottom and put it on the bottom of the toolbox in case that tag tears off. I'm always leery about tags. So um, yes, you can. Good question, newbie. Um, sorry, it skipped. The questions always skip to the top. Let me go back down to the bottom here. Where do you check your tier level for FedEx and Postmate? This is not where to check it. This is where to set it. I mean, you can check what you're what you're at, I guess. Um, you can check up what you're set at just by going to help and about. And you can see right here, I'm set to tier level two. Um, you can change your tier level right here in tools, Postmate settings, and then carrier setup, and then go to FedEx. But to know what level you are, you have to that you have to address with FedEx. I can't tell you that. Postmate doesn't know what your tier level is with FedEx. You have to tell Postmate. Um, harmonized codes are required for some shipments international now. We've done some webinars on that. I encourage you, if you haven't watched the recent webinars on international shipping, please go back and watch them. There are a mega ton of changes for international that are very important. Can I schedule a USPS pickup for free if I am a CMRA? Being a CMRA does not entitle you to a free pickup from USPS. Um, so you can give your driver the mail or your carrier the mail when they deliver your mail. If you want an additional pickup from them, it usually will cost you money. Um, there is a way to do a, mm, I forgot, the, there's a, there is a package pickup free package pickup available that you can sign up for at the post office website, specifically designed if you have priority mail packages. And um, you can you can preset those up, but you don't get to tell the, tell the post office what time to pick up. So it could be the same time as your driver delivers the mail. Otherwise, I can tell you for years and years and years, at the end of the day, um, we would take our mail to our local post office. I know it's a pain, and if you're a one-man shop, it's really hard. Uh, during the holidays, I always hired a single mom that needed to earn, in, earn some extra Christmas money. Always hired her to come, and um, after, you know, and, and she would load up her minivan with all my stuff and take it in, and, you know, I'd, I'd pay her. In fact, I paid her the same as I would pay the post office, but why not give it to somebody who needs it rather than the post office, right? So... Um, no, you can't charge, you can with a single, single battery in, uh, that is, that is in the equipment. Okay. Uh, okay. Thank you, Sandra. She says, um, this is so amazing as a new store owner. She says, I had to serve a customer. Is there, I think she wants to ask, is there a recording? And yes, as long as you signed up and all of you did, this is recorded and will be sent to you. So if you miss parts of it and want to catch it, you can watch it later. All right. I think I've got most of them. I'm sorry. It's, it's, a, it's a hodgepodge. I wish I could show you how, how squirrely all the questions are on the, on the thing. So I think if I missed your um, question and you still have that question, just email it real quickly to support at pcsynergy.com. For the next 15 minutes, I'll monitor support. And if it comes in, I'll try to answer it personally. If I can't get to it, I will have one of the support people who I know can get to it uh, and answer it properly, uh, get with you on that. Because sometimes you have some off the, co off the wall questions and that's okay. Um, I want to thank you for joining me today. It's, we've gone way over time. I hope you have a great week and um, Happy Father's Day to you fathers coming up. So take care, everybody. Bye-bye.